To open our event, we're thrilled to have with us Mr. Vincent Loy, Assistant Managing Director from the Monetary Authority of Singapore, where he spends most of his time focused on technology, analytics, and cyber risk supervision. Prior to his role, Mr. Loy spent the majority of his career in the private sector, working for Accenture and PwC as Managing Director in Financial Services and as a partner in financial crimes and cyber leadership. Mr. Loy will be delivering our keynote address today entitled Regulatory Innovation Through Data Management. Mr. Loy will be discussing how international regulatory bodies through improved data management discipline are innovating the collection and use of regulatory data to improve regulatory supervision and global risk management. Allow me now to hand over the mic microphone to Mr. Loy. And I just want to thank everyone for inviting me for this uh, event. And I'm also very glad to see all of you here because I remember last year I joined this event and I really enjoyed it very much. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot see everyone uh, in person, but I'm, I hope you are taking care of yourself and your family in this difficult time. Um, what I'm going, I, I know this is a Enterprise Data Management Council but um, I thought that uh, let me paint the picture in terms of where I look, uh, where does data management play in the financial services going forward. Uh, as you know, my role in MES is uh, strategic because it helped MES and the senior management to consider technology uh, in everything we do, be it economic policy, be it uh, financial development, and also supervision and regulatory environment. Um, but at the same time, I'm also responsible in terms of some of the work that we are doing in regards to data, technology, and also machine learning. So uh, let me share with you in terms of uh, what I see out there. I see it as technology and data is going to play a very, very huge role in financial services. Uh, we all complain about the future being unknown. Uh, uh, but the only thing that is certain is the role of technology and data in the future. And we also see that um, um, artificial intelligence and data analytics, what we call AID, uh, IDA, with technology and the use of data trans transformation business model and processes as one of the key initiatives most organizations are going through. Especially with COVID, people realize that this is so important for them going forward. Uh, let's talk about either application in the financial institution. Technology development has transformed the way financial services have been delivered. For instance, the use of robo-advisor and AI-driven investment decision. Financial institutions are also using AI to gain better customer insight increase productivity, and also generate cost saving. And so AI has done a build, uh, IDA has done a wonderful job to the financial institution. What about IDA to the regulator? Let me share with you in regards to what we are doing for, uh, with e, uh, IDA. Uh, for the regulator, technology and data has played a very important role in the regulatory and supervisory purposes. Regulators are constantly getting the data as uh, some of the panelists said just now, and we are constantly uh, 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 fusing the data, uh, uh, querying the data, and also protecting the data to make it safe, uh, uh, to make MES or the financial services sector safe, stable, and secured. IDA has allowed us to go deeper and get better insight from the data by applying technique like uh, NLP to analyze the data set. Some of the great things that we are seeing in-house is in the, in the anti-money laundering space. The other area that we are doing a lot of work in regards to the great work that is done by uh, our former CDO and all the great people in MES is actually using machine learning or using data analytics to help us to visualize 
data or visualize issue in a much more insightful way. And this has helped us in terms of decision making and able to make better decision. Um, but, so those are the wonderful things in regards to IDA. And I congratulate the financial services industry for all the great things that they have done. Having said that, there is also a lot of um, overstatement and a lot of cliché I hear from using IDA. In fact, as a regulator, I meet up with a lot of senior management in the financial institution. And a lot of time, um, the answer, whenever they can't find an answer, they will tell me that they use AI or machine learning to solve their problem. Okay, it comes to an extent that sometimes I wonder whether it is uh, basically a shield for them to prevent us from asking more questions. Or uh, I don't blame the, 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 the banks or the senior management, but I'm worried that there is uh, also a lot of um, um, misinformation or hyping the expectation of AI or IDA, uh, because there's still a lot of things to be done in terms of IDA to make it even more successful and even more useful for the financial services industry. Uh, for IDA to have a significant impact, the basic foundation, such as people, data management, data governance, has to be in place. And that's where I think this organization, uh, Data Management Council, has a big role to play. I see them as two important roles in terms of upskilling the people, because there is still a lot of things we need to make sure that uh, to get it right, to make sure that we can take advantage of the full possibility of either. Uh, you can, either can only be successful if we have good quality data, secure data, organized data, and trustworthy data. And that requires very fundamental like data governance and data management which is something that I personally think that the financial services industry are still in a stage of uh, 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 still learning. Because I think in the last few years, financial institution has invested a lot on data governance. But there's still a lot of work to be done to make sure that eventually we can use all the wonderful things about data and also about IDA. Um, let's talk about people. Training of the people, uh, I think that I, I'm very glad to be talking to all the experts out there in regards to data management. But we need to propagate this data management skill to the line business, to all parts of the organization. In MAS, we are also doing that because the user will be as important as a specialist in terms of making sure that we have quality, secure, and useful data. And, it is, and these people uh, or the data, and, uh, data people will also need to understand a little bit about technology, a little bit about um, tech, um, algorithm, is a little bit about data analytics to bring them together. One of the tragic of Either is basically, as you probably can know from the organization, a lot of organizations have come up with POC, but a lot of organizations also struggle in terms of scalability and also productionizing the either that they have created in the POC. And why they have problem with that is because they are lack of engineering skill set, they don't have proper data governance, and don't, they don't have the proper technology to help them with that. Technology will, help, um, technology will help us to do many things more effectively. And the organization that can integrate data, um, either skill together with data management and also understanding the business context will be able to produce or make use of data analytics or machine learning to the fullest. And obstacle integration happens when the business and the tech 
see how technology can be applied and work together to achieve what they want. And they build on each other experiences and skill set effectively. It is absolutely crucial to have a culture to foster collaboration and innovation. We need transparency and trust where people are able to share their ideas and feedback and exchange view openly. At the end of the day, there will always be a human element in decision making. And that's where ethics become very important. Um, the either application or the output that you create is basically the child of the creator. And they will take in the attributes of the creator. And that's why uh, the creator needs to be taught in terms of ethics, in terms of fairness. Uh, and those are the things that um, MAS has, um, has uh, shared with the industry. We expect the industry to adhere to them. And uh, we will be spending more time with the industry in regards to what are they doing in regards to ethics in AI or machine learning. Let's talk about the final piece, which is data governance, which you are most interested. It is important to get the data in order. This involves not only understanding the data that we have, but also having the necessary processes to achieve the data integrity and quality. Uh, as you probably all of you know, that actually a lot of time in terms of using either, 80% of the effort is in regards to data cleansing, making sure that the data is right enough to uh, clean enough to help you to achieve your objective. Data quality is important fundamental that leads to better decision and for compliance and regulatory reporting. Therefore, data governance process such as data lineage, data structure, data standard needs to be in place. And uh, the only health warning I would encourage organization is that this is a huge effort and this is probably a, a journey that organization have to go through. I would encourage organization to deal with this issue based on use cases rather than coming up with a big project that will go on for ages and century to come. And uh, I also encourage the industry, what is MES doing uh, in regards to data governance? We are working very closely with the industry. We will be working even more closely with the industry in terms of data taxonomy in the industry. Uh, this is important uh, because we hear the pain, uh, the, the problem statement for the FI in regards to giving data to MAS. And a lot of time is because of um, there is no proper taxonomy, definition of data. And so we will be starting, in fact, we have started a small little project with FI to, un to, come, uh, to agree on data taxonomy. But this will be a journey and this will be based on use cases. On top of that, we are also encouraging the industry to collaborate closely together as a block, working with best practice industry player and come and engage to MAS. MAS suggest to us how we can help the data journey for the industry. Uh, internally in MAS, we are going through a big transformation in terms of data governance. We have defined ownership at each of this la layer, even up to the business, we have come up, defined a process to make sure that there are proper data lineage and proper governance throughout MES. And we are also looking at how do we reduce data duplication, which is a, 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 a difficult effort. And also at the same time, we are looking at the infrastructure that we use, the technology that we use to collect data collection. This will be a journey. We will not be successful alone. MAS will work together with the industry and we can only work with the industry to make it a success. Um, with that, I just want to thank you everyone for inviting me here.
My final message is reiterate that with technology and data, you must ensure the right culture to conduct people, data management and governance. I encourage all organizations to look at it seriously, deliberately, deeply, and engage your management to make sure that they understand the importance of the fundamental of data management. With that, I wish everyone uh, have an enjoyable and enlightening event today. Thank you very much. Vincent, that was, that was fantastic. <laughs> Thanks so much. And no worries about being back to back in meetings. I think we're all experiencing the challenges in that. So I really, really appreciate you rushing over and, and being able to present. It, you said so many key things in, 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 your, in your statement. And if I could just, just briefly go through it. Here's the thing I walk away from. In order to leverage these new technologies, you need good trusted data. To have good trusted data, you have to train and skill your experts. And those skilled experts have to be in place to implement effective data management and data governance. And I think that's just a great story for, for the practitioners, but also for management to hear. Because so oftentimes, still amazingly, they think of data as this kind of magical thing. And it really isn't. It's very logical in its approach. And you did a great job of laying it out. And if I may, the last two things you mentioned about common taxonomy and collaboration, public and private collaboration. Our last panel actually was going to touch upon that. So you did a great job at setting up for that last panel. So um, on it's all of... <laughs> Go ahead, I'm sorry. It's all coordinated, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it, like I said, you hit so many great points. Um, uh, on behalf of the council, on behalf of everybody, thanks so much for making time for this. Uh, I, I know there's some questions coming in the chat box and we'll have to address it there and I know you, you have to run. So uh, again, uh, uh, gr great uh, uh, presentation and sharing your perspective on, on uh, you know, the, the current challenges of data management. Really, really appreciate it. Um, thank you very much. I'm happy to take a few uh, uh, questions. I, I have about seven minutes before I ah, need to. Okay. Mike, do you have a few? Well, uh, hey, John, we have a good question here from uh, Sheetal. Uh, and it, the question, Vincent, is uh, he would like to know a bit more on the journey to introduce a taxonomy and how is that important in the work that uh, Maz is performing uh, and where is that as a key foundational piece going forward? I think that um, uh, I, I spend a lot of time with the senior management of, of all the FI. And, and you probably know that one of the big common complaints is the amount of time and effort and cost involved in registry reporting. And some of the things that uh, we hear is that the regulator asks for a lot of information and sometimes they are duplicate data uh, information and a lot of this information uh, they cannot get it because uh, it is not exactly what they have inside the system so they have to do a lot of uh, internal process just to get the data and uh, we spend a lot of time with other central banker and this is a big problem and to do that uh, we need to go to the fundamental of data in regards to um, does the FI know why we are collecting this data? And at the same time is that does the FI have the same definition of the data that we want to collect? And, and surprisingly, uh, there are very few data that we define are similar to FI, unfortunately. Okay, and that's where I think the common taxonomy is important so that everybody understand when we say uh, certain like deposit, what does it mean okay so that uh, they can build it inside their system so eventually they whatever mes wants they can provide to mes and so that there will not be any toing and flowing and also that they can build the technology because uh, to support all this uh, data transformation to make sure that the definition is exactly the same as mes so, uh, in the demana state is that we want everybody to have the same definition. Unfortunately, this is not possible. So the only way to do is that when we have MEF as a definition, everybody know what that definition is, and everybody knows how they are going to get this uh, data 
from their internal system. And that is important. And this is something that we need to get it right, basically. We are not there yet. We are working with the uh, ecosystem to, to come up with something on a use case basis. Uh, Vincent, great, great uh, question. Uh, another question has come in that is from uh, Vamsi, and is that data governance is often looked at as a compliance function that could slow down a process. Uh, to the comment that the previous commentators made about brakes or seat belts, how does this make sure that there's balance between compliance enablement um, when implementing in cloud versus newer data technology? And, and your, your vision is, companies start looking at cloud, uh, what does that mean from a regulator's perspective uh, to both enable that, but also do it uh, with good controls? Okay, um, um, I, I'm in charge of technology uh, strategy. So um, let me uh, assure all the FI, MAS is not opposed to cloud. Okay, MAS ourselves are going to the cloud journey. Uh, we encourage um, FI to use the cloud uh, because a lot of capability in the cloud that a lot of FI will struggle to come up with on their own. Okay, so we can see the benefits of cloud. The only thing is that uh, they need to know what they are doing and they need to manage the risk. Just like anything we do in life, when you cross the road, you still need to know what is the traffic rule and you need to look at the traffic light before you cross the road, you need to look left and right. That is as basic as living, that's all I can say. Okay, and, and I, I personally, I am not a fan of compliance. I, uh, I am a fan of risk management. Okay, compliance can only bring you a certain place, but it's not sufficient enough because innovation changes all the time. And what is important is people understand the risk and actually to manage the risk in a proactive way. And that is the same as cloud. And in fact, this cloud is something that we are taking leadership globally in, in the regulatory space. If I'm going to be honest, a lot of problem with cloud is actually not with the vendor. It is actually the interface is, is actually a lot of time is the organization that has reconfiguration problem. Okay, uh, of course, there are some uh, very, very infrequent basis where the cloud vendor has some issue. We are working with other regulator. We are engaging the cloud vendors as well in terms of how can they be a more collaborative and more effective partner to the financial institutions. Vincent, a great answer. Sort of a final question, and John, you may have uh, one you'd like to bring in and then we can uh, wrap up and we, we want to be sensitive to your time, uh, Vincent. Uh, this Thank question you. is about uh, MAS and MAS participating in industry initiatives to support some of these forward capabilities. Um, is that part of the plan with MAS? Uh, it may be some that you already are active in. Uh, no, we, we, we think that the future is collaboration with the industry. Okay, and so if there's any collaboration that you can think of, that you think that the regulator have a role, please approach MES. Okay, we are here to work with the industry. We cannot solve the problem ourselves. We need to work with the industry to solve the problem. And the problem has to be uh, useful for the industry uh, because we are here to help the industry to flourish. Well, and Vincent, that's a, a well-timed uh, statement. The, as John mentioned, the EDM Council is working on a cloud data management capability framework with the top cloud and financial services firms. And one of the, the venues we're going to be bringing up soon uh, this fall and early winter is going to be the opportunity to share that framework and get some feedback. Uh, are we putting in the right controls and measures in that framework? to help accelerate cloud adoption, but to do it in a thoughtful way. So I think, John, we're good to probably take up Vincent on his uh, offer to get some commentary. This will be a global initiative and we would absolutely welcome uh, Mass's uh, and other regulators uh, input. John, any final questions before we uh, let Vincent get on with his uh, pack day? Um, I I've added about three or four other things to approach Vincent on after this. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so Really look yeah. forward to working with uh, with you on a lot of these activities. Uh, look, I, I'm really apologetic because I see that there's quite a lot of questions in the QA, Q and A, which I don't have a chance to answer. Uh, hopefully, somebody will write it down and send Absolutely. it over to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Respond. Okay. Um, I wish you all.
very best. Have a lovely day and all of you take care of yourself.